tracks it beautifully, flights it down, and more importantly, today, he's accurate with this club. Martin Keimer, nine appearances in the PGA Championship. The winner in 2010. One in a playoff, three medal. The 2010 PGA Champion, Martin Keimer. Keimer shot a 71 in round three, which he completed this morning. Talked about Stinson. All three rounds at 67. Would another one be good enough? That's this one's heading right. That is way right for Keimer off the tee. That is in the area where Phil Mickelson hit his provisional in Friday's round when Phil made triple bogey on the hole. So Keimer in trouble to start his final round. You're watching Featured Group 2 live from the 98th PGA Championship. First tee shot landed underneath that chair. So the chair's been moved. Now Keimer taking a look. That's not as far right as Mickelson put it. Coming down just left of the idea. If it will stay in that spot, we're just going to find the nearest spot where it will stay to rest. has an opening towards this first green. Heimer looking up at the trees with his caddy, Craig Connolly. Hold the cart, please. There you see the huge tree in front of him. So it's the finishing the right hand part of you know, it's the finishing the bunker. Yeah. Trying to go shoot ball over there. Yeah. Looks like he's gonna try to take this through that little opening you see to the right of the big tree. He'll have to turn it right to left because if he doesn't here, in the light is not conducive to that. There's a lot of grass behind the ball. Good solid contact though. He got a lot of cliff face on that ball. Uh, and you heard his caddy say, hey, you end up in the bunker, that's okay. You can get up and down from there. And there's a risk worth taking for Keimer. Now he just has to execute from the sand. out of the bunker oh, what a recovery though that wasn't that easy too didn't have much green to work with that's a steep face bunker there you saw the ball come out flat really not as flat as you would expect it because of, given the steepness of the face right in front of him not much breeze to speak of either today are playing 36 today. Well, certainly so, but uh, it will definitely heat up on the back nine. Now, Keimer. This would be 
be a terrific par save. Wide right with the tee shot. Played an incredible shot just to get to the green side bunker on the right hand side. Then a very good bunker shot. Still got a good six to eight feet left here. Maybe closer to eight feet. The two time major champion from Germany trying to save par on the first hole. Just under eight feet. And he's caught it. Mm. From the right rough off the tee, Martin Keimer. Puts a four on the card at the first hole. Wow, that was a great save there. He's just minutes away from starting his final round as we take a look at this par four second hole. 374 yards today. No need to hit driver, and it's sure Stinson will probably not. He'll go with that three wood. Pretty straightforward hole in a green that uh, there's a little ridge that bisects this green from front to back. That hole location on the second hole today in the back right portion. There's some slope just to the right of that bunker. Greenside bunker right that will feed the ball down toward the hole if you happen to miss a little right. Played as the fourth easiest hole so far today. Keimer also with iron off the tee at number two. And Keimer in the fairway as well at the short par four second. We'll see if Stenson or Keimer can get in birdie range. Stenson only two shots off the lead. As well, so you get a little bit more. One sixty six to the hole for Keimer. Beautiful shot as well. It's the way to play it here on the second hole. Just find the fairway, and you'll have a great chance to make birdie. Martin Keimer, the 2010 PGA champion. Playing in his ninth PGA championship. Beat Bubba Watson back in 10 in the three hole aggregate playoff. Leave it. Oh, shit. Remember? Yeah. Rank number 51 in the world right now, but yeah. mostly on the European tour. And last five times that. The first major has come at the PGA Championship. Y Yang and 09, then Keimer, Keegan Bradley, Duffner, and Day. Only Keimer has gone on to win another one so far. Winning the US Open in 2014. Same year he won the Players Championship. Jason Day opens with a bogey on the first hole. So Jimmy Walker's lead goes to two as he plays the first. And Jason Day missed the fairway to the right. Had to pitch out and end up making bogey. Stinson a great opportunity here to pull within one. And he'll be first to putt here at the second. And you think there'll be more scoreboard watching than normal because of 
the fact that we didn't repair? Yeah, certainly so. You see where everyone's uh, following line, what what uh, what the golf course is yielding. similar length for his birdie putt. He finds the touch. A birdie at the second hole for Martin Keimer. And he moves to five under par for the championship. work they have done to get this course ready for play today as we look at the very challenging par four third hole playing 505 today. it is something to dog leg to the right some of the longer players will try to bite off some of that dog leg down the left hand side but you cannot miss their heavy rep down that left hand side ideally you like to be in that right hand side of the fairway the green opens up from there whole location today in that back portion of the green once again on the right hand side as the PGA of America rule staff has positioned those whole locations today in the, some of the highest areas on the green. Six tenths of an inch of rain overnight. More rain this morning into the afternoon. Coming off the birdie will be first to tee it up. And you'll see there what he try, tries to do quite a bit of time. Keimer will tee that ball down just to bit and try to squeeze one out. It's so much easier for him to turn it over in that state. You see right there the ball tee down not as high as he usually does. Oh, this one heading left. Get around that corner. It's not the place to miss here on the third hole. Well, that got down there a long ways around that corner. He got a pretty good break. It all depends on the lie, but uh, those trees, almost like it went through the trees. And there's some small bushes over to the left also. You have to be concerned with down that left side. Now, Keimer, his tee shot ended up in the rough. That will that does have an opening there. Yeah, 181 yards got lucky to avoid the trees up off the left on the tee. Wow. Goes long and right on this one. So from rough to rough for Martin Kammer. Yeah. Missed it on the correct side of the hole there. He's got some green to work with, that's for sure. And you hold it dog legs like that. Right to left. Now Keimer up to the third green where his approach shot went long. The rough's getting long, isn't it, with this rain, humidity. It's heavy. Right up against the, what, you know, almost a third cut of rough. You can just see the top of his ball there. Shouldn't be much of an issue with his backswing here, just how much grass gets caught between the club face and the ball. Ready. 
You can barely see the tops of his shoes. That's how thick the rough is here for his third. And that came out nice and soft there. What a shot by Keimer. Beautiful up and down with the first Keimer had from the green side bunker right. And now another chance to miss the first two greens to actually be one under par through three and only hitting one green in regulation. trying to scramble for his par and remain at five under. Yes, sir. Yeah. Two sporty up and down for Keimer. And Martin does not like playing that way. He is steady as she goes, but uh, he's certainly showcasing all of his talent there around the green. Nine under as they make their way over to the par three fourth hole. Playing 195 yards today over the water and where that hole location is positioned today in that back center of the green, the water will not come to play. It'll take a total miss hit to find the water. See the ridge that bisects this green. The location. Very popular spot for the spectators. See that grandstand, not a seat to be had. Here's Keimer. Looks like a good line. It is right over the top of the flag stick. Good call there, Andrew. over the top of the flagship for sure. It's Stinson struggled with throughout the years as a professional golfer, although didn't have any troubles on the slower greens <laughs> at Troon. I just wonder if the water that's in the greens here at Boulder's Roll may have helped him because the greens are slower. They are slower, but, you know, he had pretty good pace uh, control yesterday, and, and today we haven't seen a, I mean, noticeable difference of the pacing of the greens, but he has come up short three of the first four holes with his birdie attempts. Speaking of which, Kymer to get to six under par. Yeah, I played a six iron at this position right on top of the flag. I always find that fascinating about Martin Kymer since that win at the 2010 PGA. He's only had one top ten in a major since, and he won it. I gotta be honest with you, I've, I've tried to figure out that whole scenario about Martin Kymer after he did that. You look at his game and you start, you look at stats, you look at everything throughout his game, you're going, what's the deal? I can't put, I really can't put my finger on it right now. What, what piece of the puzzle is he made? Series of par fours here that really test the player. This is the first of the Yeah, start out right here, 428 yards of par four. Bunkers down the left-hand side. Those bunkers are actually really directional bunkers there. You can fly it over there. Then you have the staggering bunker on the right and the left. You try to fit it in between there. The second shot plays slightly back up the hill. And there's a little uh, section of the green that's bisected that comes from left to right there. And the, that part of the green slopes hard from back to front right there. So you have to fly it over that if you're going to get it close today. Two solid shots required. Just a fairway medal for Kyber. This story unfolding about Brandon Grace is something. Well, he finished third at the PGA Championship at uh, Whistling Straits last year, although there was a gap too far back from Jason Day. And Nobody was catching that Jordan guy. Spieth did there in the final round. And he was a very good chance of winning the US Open Chambers Bay last year when he ultimately 
hit it out of bounds on the 16th hole, that drivable par four that yep. ended his campaign, the 70th hole of the championship. Unlikely out of bounds because he's one of the straightest drivers in the game today. He's made a stern stuff though, Brandon Gray. Nice firm lower half. Well, yeah, first thing and foremost, though, you have to line out to the right because of the swing of the radius of your, your body, Clubface is going to shut down very quickly. Doesn't stay on line for very long. Now Martin Keimer just underneath the lip of the bunker. It's going to take a big hit for him just to get to the green there. And just barely gets it out. I doubt even with solid contact, he uh, could have gotten to the green from there. Four or five feet. Keimer was aiming to become just the third European player to win three major championships by the age of 31, following the footsteps of Severano Ballesteros and Rory McIlroy, but it won't be this week. It just seems to be a step too far back at five under. Too many good players between he and the house. Unless he goes on one of those toward runs that we saw Friday afternoon by Jason Day. Jason Day has a lengthy birdie look at four. Jimmy Walker has played his second at the third. What about Jason Day dropping a couple of shots out of the blocks? Unexpected, he's now three off the pace. Jason's been fighting left from the get-go here as Day. Now Cameron still not up to the drive. where most of the players hit it right there. We'll have long here though. No more than a wedge or nine iron left. It was a fascinating time when Martin Kama won that PGA championship, got to world number one. Yes. Missed his first four cuts at the Masters and he was trying to work out how to hit the draw because he was a fighter of the golf ball. Always stick with the shot shape that's natural to you. Who does that remind you of by any chance? And it goes back to a guy who won two majors back to back and that was Padre Carrington when he made that move. It's been through about 20 swing changes since his new poetry. Time is compounding the error here through the green in three. And that will be no easy chip from there. Uh, that's gnarly right there. Granted, the grass will be going with him. Uh, there is not much green to work with, as you can see. And up and down from there to save his bogey is going to be a handful for Keimer. Now he has missed three of the first five greens here today. Fairway. There's a succession of par fours, the fifth through the eighth. A couple of really long ones, a couple of challenging ones, and then a gettable par four, the eighth, before the golf course really sort, sort of opens up. The first seven holes here at Bob was rather the hardest. And, and you speak of the eighth, it's been interesting as, as I watched that hole unfold this week. And it just seems very simplistic to me off the tee. Lay it up with an iron, wedge it on. But we've seen so many players play driver there in three wood, put themselves in trouble. Now they, I've, I've seen a few players, you know, end up making birdie out of the rough or out of an awkward lie. But the eighth hole you talk about, that's one. If, if you're a player, you don't want to get ahead of yourself. But the, you're thinking, okay, this is one spot where I might be able to get one back. It it, it, it lets up a little bit from Boulder Strong. Iron it on and wedge it on. And uh, I've, it, it's been a confusing hole to me to watch a lot of players play that hole. down the stretch here if the weather can hold off because in the last five holes you've got three of the easiest 14 15 and 18. Yeah. and obviously 17 is a par five as well which many players will be coming in with a wedge no it's amazing the way the 17th hole is playing right now it's been playing uh not long ago there had not been a bogey at 17 which is amazing today measuring you know uh, 618 yards not gettable in two but uh Players are handling the whole location there. It, it's quite simple though on that left-hand side of the green. And now Kyra, watch when he hits here. Watch the grass as it comes up here, going against going against the grain. Oh, it just splashes out. Hey, uh, can I take that back? That's going to be a difficult shot. That was uh, that was very classy there. 
Yeah, we're talking about the best in the world, and Kaima will tap that in for a bogey. So one birdie, and second one bogey. So he's level for the day through five holes, four under for the championship. Let's take one more look at this. Just splashes out like a bunker shot. There goes that grass right there. And the key to that shot right there is speed. Even though he had a short distance to go, he used the bounce of his club from that sand wedge like he was coming out of the sand, let the base of that club slide through that grass in continual motion, acceleration through the hitting zone. Billy Ray on facet hole navigator despite missing the fairway off the tee. Let's head across to the sixth that plays 476 yards. Yeah, it's all, all you want in the par four here. Uh, obviously, players cannot see the ball in. There's a little rise in the center of the fairway right there, up and over there. 33 yards wide between those bunkers on the left and the right. That hole location today here at the sixth hole is in that left portion of the green. Now, there is some slope just behind the, the flagstick that comes back toward the flagstick, so that's going to help them, but the, it sits right on a small little slope about like four paces over that ridge. Bunkering fantastic here. i, I got to tell you, it frames the green so at the top of the ball, which is a good sign. I just wonder if he tried to hit that a little harder, knowing he's got to try and get down the hill. Yeah, that's a good point, though, but usually he, he plays that club so much. Uh, fans will tell you exactly where that's at. And it tries to get down to the base of that hill. It'll run out. Surprising, though, with all the rain. Answers your question right there. It does. Yes, kudos to Mark Coons and his team, the director of agronomy here at Boulder's Roll. Despite when you thought there were a couple of challenges being presented to him, he puts them both within 20, 25 feet. And now Kaima from the centre of the fairway. If anything, a little bit slightly on the downslope. All right. You know, you're talking about the shots by Stinson. The one back at the fifth really impressed me. Off the edge of the bunker, the ball was well above his feet. Six iron, just actually able to get the ball up in the air and hit a fantastic shot. It wouldn't be surprise me. Stinson is just, he, he's lurking right now. He's waiting to pounce. He's looking at the leaderboard right now. Who's going to make a mistake? Posthumously inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame this year. And in 2005, the club was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Yep. And furthermore, in 2014, it became a national historic landmark in recognition of its importance to Tillinghast's career as a course designer. Yeah, there's the, the other three there are... Uh, Oakmont, Pinehurst, one more. Does Wingfoot get in the conversation? Another tilling has to... Marion. Marion, that's right. The Wicker Basket Flagsticks. I was fortunate enough to play Marion straight after the US Open at Oakmont this year. That is a special experience, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. If you're out there for fun, it's a great experience. <laughs> if you're out there playing major championship golf, it's another. Yes, it's too hard to... Uh for a person of my limited abilities, but Kaim has got this look for birdie fairly straight. In, you know, the, there's some slope to the right of this green here that could influence this putt, and if it doesn't hold its speed, it could turn off to the left at the end. Just as it did right there. That portion of the green is raised over on the right-hand side by that bunker. It's all about fall lines around here at this golf course where the water is fed off. It's called surface draining. It is, it's another forgotten art at times. Well, that is part of the beauty of this property, and I prefer the upper course, to be honest, right. um, because it's built on the side of the mountain. That affects right. everything. And right. Well, Jason Day birdied the fifth as well. He'll head to the sixth, but why don't we head to the seventh, one of the two converted par fives here? 488 yards, dog leg to the right. Imperative that bunker right there. You stay out of that bunker down the left hand side, especially if you get deep enough into it. There's a huge face that will not allow the player to get all the way up to this green. And I love the way the opening of the green is. There's two little areas. There's a mock bunker just short of the green, some 40 yards. Really gives the player a lot of depth perception issues. And again, you know, these lines that we're seeing on our screen right now, those are not sharp ridges. You have an overly long 
shot. He stung that pretty good. It's only from the back of that bunker. It's only 151 yards short uh, to the front. Look at Mark Kimer, toe line, hip line, shoulder line, aiming left. This will have some curve from left to right, and certainly so. Did he overcut it though? It certainly did. One left, one right. I'll march up the center of the fairway and we'll take a quick break. Be back with more here in our feature group coverage of the 98th PGA Championship. So Kiner, who missed to the right, in the right bunker, Stenson missing to the left for the third straight time. He is in the intermediate cut. They graduate the rough here at the PGA, like the USGA has also started to do, but hats off to Kerry Haig and the rest of his staff. You know, Henrik Stenson will be in the European team, but Martin Keimer is on the outside looking in. He had a big week here with double points on offer. Pull that ball in the fairway. He's alone in second now at 10 under par after Brandon Grace missed a short putt at 16. There's a look at Kimer and what he has left. Hit the lip on his second shot on five out of that fairway bunker. You can just see the top of the flag stick at the best here. Marty! Ball strike, Martin. That's a high caliber golf <laughs> shot, that one. You think? <laughs> That's brilliant. Yes, it is. Flushed it. 197 Spot yards. On. Spot on. We flew it 200. Mm. Pretty impressive there. Yeah. He knows it. <laughs> he certainly does. A little glimmer in his eye, isn't there? Don't you like that one, big mm. guy? This was a bit. Martin Kimer's bunker shot again. I love the lower body, how stable it stays. And players that are so good out of fairway bunkers, that's the key there, too. The impact there, right foot was firmly on the ground. What, what that does, that keeps your hips and your shoulders level so you don't hit the sand first, making sure you catch the ball first there. And with that shot, also with Keimer, you have to take enough loft to make sure you get over that steep face bunker and fly at 200 yards. That's it. An indifferent ball striking week by Keimer. What's the target for a professional? 14, 15 greens in regulation is sort of there. That would be awesome. If you could average 14 greens around, you know, and hold just a couple putts, you're going to be right there. I mean, that, that's fabulous. If you, if you average 15 greens around, you're, you're in the top five every year of, of greens hit in regulation. So many of these players have got terrific short games. They take chances, you know, they could actually put the ball in the center of the green, but they with the terrific short game that they have, they'll, they'll be more aggressive with their second shots or approach shots, I should say, and they'll miss more greens, but uh, they take the chance. So Kimer will walk up and mark his ball. Very impressed with that shot. You can see there a little bit of slope between here and T there at the eighth. Martin Keimer is still chasing his next win since that US Open victory. Where he decimated the field at Pinehurst. Ended up being an eight shot margin in the end. runner-up in a European Tour event since. Had 15 top 10s, but it hasn't snowballed into the career that you'd think after the learning the lessons from being world number one the first time round. Yeah. You already mentioned that, that ridge he has to go through here. It will send it off to the right once it gets down to the base right there. 
Good speed. Oh, what, oh. what a three that is. Drives it in the fairway bunker. Incredible shot that he hits right there. Over 200 yards. Carries that whole lip. Carries it all the way back to the flagstick. All right. It is six behind. That's stealing mud, isn't it? It's just a quick walk to the eighth tee. There it is. Why don't we have a look at this fascinating little four? <laughs> fascinating at that. 300 and... 81 yards today. I don't see a need to hit anything more than the three or four iron off the tee. Get up there about 230, 240 yards left. Now you're left with a 140 yard shot into the screen. And this whole location today is positioned just on that right hand side. There's a slope just to the left of the hole that you can actually use as a backstop and bring it back toward the hole. This is definitely a birdie opportunity for this. Miss it in the fairway bunker, miss it right in the trees. This is the way that I would play the hole that Keimer's doing right now, using a long iron off the tee, takes the bunkers up the left-hand side, out of play. Well done. I mean, perfect position. Now he's left with either a 9-iron or a wedge in his hand. He knows what it takes to win a major championship here as Boulders Roll. You're watching feature groups coverage. We're going to be right in the mix. Henrik Stenson, Jason Day. Yes. They are looming close. Stenson just one shot off the lead held by Jimmy Walker. You're watching feature group two. Stenson playing alongside Martin Keimer, who has 154 yards left to the hole here at number eight. Now, this green is partially blocked by the ridge that runs through the fairway. Back right hole location, the steepest part of this green, so you must be careful. Ideal spot just short left of the hole. Timer coming off the birdie at seven. And he'll have another great chance for birdie at the eighth. He drew that back a little bit, but that's okay. Virtually a straight and uphill puff from there. In the last 24 hours, what do you make of the scoring conditions right now? Greens are soft, as we've seen, but the course also is playing a lot longer. Yes, and uh, hole locations today, only two hole locations are in the front half of the green. Uh, there's one in the middle, and the rest of them are towards the back of the green, which means, you know, as soft as they are, the ball's going to spin back a lot, so you have to be careful about hitting it past the pin and hitting it over the green. Yeah, PGA of America did not have a lot of options with the hole locations for the final round. They, they said they wanted to try to use the higher points on the green, assuming they would be the most dry, so... That is Especially on four, you see it in the back today, and there's a number that they have gone further back than they normally would have liked to. Right, there's been a... You know, they'll have a pretty short tap in there, waiting for Martin Keimer. Martin's putt should be pretty straight. Bit, bit, probably just a slight bit of break, if any. Keimer trying to make it back-to-back -back birdies, and if he does, he'd pull within five of the lead. was uphill and that part of the green being one of the steeper parts of the course did not hit the ball hard enough tap in par for Keimer one under on his round and minus five for the championship he's going to have to get on a roll he's going to have to string together five or six birdies all right let's take a closer look at this par three ninth hole Lee Yes, they have two tees, one right, one left, depending on where they use the whole location. We've seen front left and middle left. Today, it's almost straight back in the center, but close to the back left part of the green. It's about as long as this hole is going to play all week. Um, the greens are soft, so I expect guys just to fly it all the way to the hole. Normally, this green, you're going to hit the ball towards the front and run it back to the pin. This is the longest it's played all week. Well, the advantage on the par three is they have a clean lie and a clean ball, but now with the lift clean in place, if you hit the ball in the fairway, you're basically playing a par three on every hole. Mm -hmm. 
please. Martin and his caddy quietly discussing what he's going to do. His caddy just wants to make sure he is totally committed to the shot. Three pars this week at the ninth on the par three for Martin Keimer, and he changes clubs. Yep. The other club, it may have been that he had to either curve the ball one way or the other and, and wasn't particularly comfortable hitting that shot. I don't know if he went to more club or less club. Six iron. This is the left team ground. Imagine he's going to try and hit this ball to the right side and draw it in. Looks like a good line. Stays out to the right, hole high, and a long birdie chance coming for Keimer on the ninth to close out his first nine. Yeah, a little bit further up the green, the slope on the green may have taken that ball a little bit more to the left, and he would have gotten closer to the hole. But he is safely on the green. Baltusrol in 1993. I'm Andrew Catalan. We take you back out to the ninth, and you can see what Keimer and Stenson use a little muscle here on the ninth green. Yeah, that just tells you how soft it is. Um, conditions went from soft to muddy. When they're soft, like Friday afternoon, scoring is ideal. Now, muddy does lead to good scoring, but there are some obstacles. Anything outside the fairway area, you've got the conditions are not great. You know, you have to contend with the rough right off the fairway, but outside that, where the people have been walking, it's just muddy and not good. What about on the greens, Lee? These two played their third round this morning. Had some more rain since then. We've had more golfers come through. How different do you think the greens are now compared to when Stenson and Keimer played the ninth hole earlier today? Well, the hole locations have been moved some. One of the things that happens when it rains this much that every footprint tends to be a little deeper and doesn't recover fa as fast as when the greens are firm. So, you know, basically you're going to butt through more bumpy areas when the greens are super soft. Sometimes, you know, on a where well, a hole location is on a pretty good slope and all the putts are breaking to below the hole, then that's that's one of the biggest challenges. You have to putt through the most footprints because everybody ends up putting from short of the hole. Keimer for birdie, 36 feet away. He had the right line, just leaves it a bit short. Now Stenson was standing not too far from the hole as far as a line goes. You know, give him a chance to peek at his line from the opposite side of the hole, but also it gave him a chance to judge one shot back of Jimmy Walker. Now Keimer for his two putt par. And Keimer goes into his second nine, six shots off the lead. Flat, you have to be careful where you landed on the green because it could run through, but as soft as they are now, it doesn't matter. They're just going to fire it to pin wherever it is. As many birdies as bogeys on this Tenth hole today, which is played as the eighth toughest stroke average right on par. And Keimer will be first. Well, it still feels like an easier hole, even though it's in the harder half. But you've played four of the top seven hardest holes already. Heading down the left side. And in the ends left up rough. in the rough. Well, the tees are the up. Is. Yeah, the tees are up a little bit, so I wouldn't have been surprised to see him hit three wood just because the fairway narrows up between the bunker and the hazard on the right, and there's really no need to hit it in. But to represent Sweden at the Olympics, so he plans on taking in some other events before he gets into preparation mode for the golf tournament. Keimer will be first here on the 10th. You saw his tee shot end up 
in the left rough. He's got 169 left to the hole. He's running out of time if he wants to be part of the conversation here at the last few holes. Looks like he came out of that swing a little bit from the rough and yeah. stays left. Extremely challenging lie coming out of there. He's fortunate that he's missed it on the proper side. He's got plenty of green to work with. That far right would have been almost impossible to get him down. As you can see, he can't even see his ball. He got to come down steep. Just caught some grass before he got to the ball, turned the face over rapidly. And there, when hit it in the air, but where you land it, how you get it to stop in your position this week now with the rain, they're just firing at the pin uh, and playing aggressively. Once again, we can't see Keimer's ball in the thick rough. Third shot for Keimer at number 10. He's got to get through some thick rough here. So once again, if he doesn't hit this perfectly, the club's going to turn over or maybe squirt right. It sounded very good. That's well played from there. You can still see that the full shots are stopping very quickly, but chip shots are hitting and releasing pretty good. That, you know, it was coming out of the rough, so you would expect it to roll. So he hit hard enough to go a foot and a half past. They rolled much better in case there are any lumps or bumps between you and the hole. It's got to have a little bit of pace to hold its line. What a scrambling par this would be for Keimer. Tee shot in the rough, second shot went in the rough, and he still walks away with a four. Well played by Martin Keimer. He's six shots back of the leader, Jimmy Walker. there and they are so thick you know there's no way the location a completely different one and you know the wind's a little left to right you know he might have just been trying too hard to curve the ball back there and didn't execute now Keimer his second shot and this one's a beauty from Martin Keimer setting himself up for a great opportunity for birdie and and it's getting to the time where he needs to make birdies Henrik Stenson has left himself in a very difficult spot he has a small amount of green to work with. He has hit it where everybody walks off the green, so the grass is going to be laying towards him. It's very muddy on top of that. Uh, there's a slight ridge between him and the hole, and it runs away right at the hole. So he's given himself a difficult shot. The best thing about it is the greens are very soft, so he can give a little bit more speed to it. Maybe if he can get under it all and loft it up, it's not going to run a long ways once it hits the green. So I would say that under dry conditions, a miss hit would give him a 15-footer here. He'll probably have something inside 10 feet with an average chip shot. Well, on Thursday in the opening round, Keimer had a seven-hole stretch when he made five birdies. If he could find that form here down the stretch, he would jump right back into that mix because Jimmy Walker, while still in the lead, yet to make a birdie, eight pars, and has a par putt playing with his irons. Um, instead of worrying about making a four or five footer, he can just think about, okay, what am I doing with those irons? I've hit two left. I got to correct that. Obviously, if he does that anymore the rest of the day, that's going to hamper his chances. He needs to get back on track right away because the next hole is a par three. That is right. So he's going to be ball in hand on a par three as you always are but uh, you have a perfect lie on a par three it's a great time to take advantage when the greens are soft and there's no wind or a little wind let's see if Keimer can cash in after that beautiful approach here at number 11 for birdie slightly downhill oh. well good speed Thought it was going to break left, stayed straight. And because it stayed straight, Keimer stays at five under and six shots back. Well, 
if he wins this tournament, it's going to be one heck of a finish because he's probably going to have to birdie in. They look pretty good to me. Just, I, I, I think he was just playing that to break left, and it just went straight. Here's the 12th hole, par 3. Yes, this green is mostly hidden from view, even from the new back tee, which is up a little bit from the front tee. Uh, but the green runs away almost all the way to the back of the green. The back left slightly returns the ball. Anything that runs through the green on the right goes into the chipping area and continues away from the green. When this green plays fast, this back right hole location, you'd have to be very careful not to go past the pin or right of the pin because it would run into that chipping area, set up everything. And so you hope for the best weather that week so everybody can just be in awe of what you've done for the last two years in preparation. Well, they deserve a lot of credit. Green is now clear at number 12, and Martin Keimer is on the tee. Just see the back of the green from the tee. The pins to the right of that. See the three flags behind the green. It's just almost in line with the right, the third flag. Oh, Martin Keimer throws a dart at number 12. That's a great shot and. A great Martin shot. Keimer, what a tee shot at the par three. You're watching live coverage of the 98th PGA Championship. Good call, Lee. Well, I think he's worked out that he hasn't. Well, he has decided to let him go. As you would expect, Martin Keimer closest to the pin. Just over two feet. And that big warrior just heard is a Jason Day birdie at the 11th hole. So Day now back within one of Jimmy Walker while Stenson moves into third place. Keimer finishes off the birdie at number 12. 11 green is not far from 12 green. So Henrik Stenson has heard both of those roars. And he is wondering when he is going to cause a roar for the crowd himself. Stenson makes his way over to the 13th tee, and here's what he'll have to face. You have two new features on this hole. The creek has been extended further down the right side. For those that want to take on this hole with a driver, they must be straight. The new tee box has also made this hole a lot longer, forcing the players to decide do they take driver and have to fit it between the bunker and the creek or to take a three wood and go short left of the first bunker leaving a much longer shot into the green this is a birdie opportunity today the pin is back left this green funnels right to left but you want to get over a ridge that runs through the green diagonally you want to fly the ball at least pin high and probably a little bit right of it on your second shot once you negotiate the fairway Well struck right down the middle. Well, a lot of golf left to be played, but Jimmy Walker chips in at 10. We'll see if he goes on to the win. 2005 here at Baltus Roll, it was Phil Mickelson's chip. 93 US Open champion at Baltus Roll, and now an honorary member, Lee Jansen and Lee. Wow, it's been exciting, hasn't it? Just yeah. when you wanted the tournament to light up, here it is. Yes, it is. Uh, all we could hope for. Things are starting to happen here, and it's getting very exciting. Back in 1916, 100 years ago, when Rodman Wanamaker got together a group of people not far from here for a meeting in January and decided to put together the PGA of America, it started a phenomenal institution which has helped grow the game and that same year they decided to have a championship and this championship is now celebrating 100 years but due to World War One, we lost 1917 and 1918 but this 19, this 98 PGA Championship uh, 
seems to be going along the way of a lot of the recent ones. Very, yes. Very good. It's a 100th celebration of the very first PGA Championship, but we get to celebrate what the PGA Club Pros do on a daily basis. Bill Putt with some break to the left. And after Kymer hits his approach from a very good position as well, I get your thoughts on what it's like at this stage of a major when you're trying to win your first one. Got the distance right. Draws back a little bit. It's certainly a makeable putt. So Jason Day, he got the job done last year at Whistling Straits. Henrik Stenson finally broke through at the age of 40 at Royal Troon in two weeks ago. Jimmy Walker finds himself with a one-shot lead with the back nine on Sunday to play. You won your first major title here at Bolter's Roll in 1993. What would he be feeling right now and how does he get it done from here? Well, he played the front nine very well, all pars, that's fine. Um, leading the tournament, he's had to deal with this the whole week, so I, I think he's already learned how to adjust his adrenaline, keep his thoughts on what the most important task is at hand, and that is the next shot. You make a bunker shot, sometimes you want to start celebrating and thinking, oh, you know, that's a... Quickly running out of holes, though. It's been a nice fight back by Martin Keimer, who had a sloppy 71 in his third round of plays, way out of a chance to win it. He has this for birdie to be three under for the day to be one of the low rounds out on the course. Mm, good speed, ideal speed. And um, where that hole location is, it's there's a lot of break around that hole. Let's keep an eye on that when the other players come through here. But he is hitting good speed on his putts. Hendrick has not been hitting good speed on his putts. And sometimes it can help to watch someone else roll at the right speed. Um, you're trying to gauge the greens the best you can. Given the fact that Jimmy Walker is now 13 under par, you'd have to say that this is a three-horse race. Stenson, Day and Walker, the last three players left with a chance to win the Wanamaker. Yeah, well, we know Hendrick brought it home in style two weeks ago at the Open Championship. We know Jason Day knows how to bring it home. So if you were going to compare this to a horse race, we are nearing the backstretch. And Henrik Stenson's horse needs to get going. 14 and 15 run side by side, but in opposite directions. Come over here with the three metal. Isn't it nice to see a little bit of I know, shadows? Golf courts are shining upon us here at Bolton's Roll. It's been a famous major championship venue. How proud of you are to be a member right now? Oh, yes. Uh, Bolton's Roll, unfortunate with the weather, but I think it's still holding up and showing what a great championship venue it is. We're going to have a champion crown tonight on the 18th green. Henrik Stenson is one of those three players still left in the conversation. He's currently three behind Jimmy Walker, who's just gone birdie birdie. Luke Elvey, pleased to be joined by Ned Mike. The rest of the field. But here at Boulder's Roll, Jimmy Walker's trying to separate himself from the field as he tries to make it four first time winners for just the fifth time since World War II. Most recently, it happened in 2011. And also 2003, twice this century. And then back in 1969. And also in the 1950s, so it doesn't happen awfully often. It's Denson and Day trying to have their say in the matter. And while Martin Keimer is out of contention for all intents and purposes at six under par, still a lot to play for for him. His game's starting to round back into form. Of course, a former champion of this terrific championship. Yes, he surprised us all with that victory in 2010 at Whistling Straits when Dustin Johnson was penalised for grounding his club in just a little bit of the sandy area which was deemed a hazard. It cost him a penalty. He was going to be in the playoff alongside Bubba Watson and Keimer. Keimer went on to win that playoff. And he went about reconstructing his swing after missing four consecutive cuts at the Masters. He 
tried to change his preferred ball flight from a fade to a draw. It seemed to upset him a little bit, but then he got a groove going again and won the Players' Championship into the US Open by eight shots, if you don't mind, at Pinehurst. But in the way Martin Keimer does things, he goes in peaks and troughs in his career, and they're quite significant, the ups and downs. Well, Why is that? He was number one player in the world. When he got out in front, no one was catching him. We were in the Middle East when he was winning in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, just dusting the fields off. Uh, and to your point and your question of why is that, when you try to change your golf swing as dramatically as Martin Keimer did, and you play a fade and you line up for a fade and then you start trying to see draws, it never works. Is that a shadow? Yeah, we were talking green. about Are it on the tee. Some sunshine? Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? There's been some slithers of blue sky and it's a blessing at this stage of the championship. Keimer for birdie gets us to seven under par. He makes it, lifts it in on the right side, three under the day, that's one of the hot rounds on the course. A little late surge by the German. Hasn't had a top ten in a major since that win at Pinehurst, but that was big. You mentioned his win at Pinehurst, of course he won that on Father's Day. In the Players' Championship he won, he won on Mother's Day. I wonder if he's still to buy them presents. This is his 10th major appearance since that victory in North Carolina. He's finished tied 12th a couple of times. But this year's major season's been indifferent. Tie for 49th at the Masters, tie for 37th at the US Open, and both become major champions in their own right. Let's move across to the 15th tee. Very good short forward, 436 yards. A tricky but approachable par four. As you said, 436 yards. The bunker on the right side. You want to get to it 310 yards, and it tumbles down the hill to the burn at 374 yards. From there, back uphill, playing five yards in the whole location today. In a tempting, tantalizing place, back left. Hit the fairway, and you will have a green light special, Luke, to this whole location. Relatively flat, not a whole lot of movement in this back left quadrant of the green. Usually it's a tougher test when they're firm and fast conditions because this green is so difficult to hold Go and get the ball in the right Henry spot. Henry. But the fact that it's been soft has become a little bit more of target golf. Players have to have the courage to flight that ball all the way near the back edge. going with driver here there's enough room to land this just past the bunkers how good of a bounce is this for Martin Keimer and he'll have a perfect angle the uphill right to left approach shot to that back left fin of what's going through their bodies at this stage of a championship, even if you've won a couple of them. It's plenty of tension, plenty of energy. Doesn't have much ground left. Any opportunities in the barrel. Good angle, as you mentioned, here for Kyla. Oh, tricky above his feet. Out of the rough. Be too disappointed with that, but it'll be predominantly uphill, a little left to right. And that's one of the ones that if the golf course were firm and fast, Luke, that's one hop and over the back edge of the green. He pulled it slightly, had no spin coming out of that rough. But in the end, it's a good opportunity for Birdie. There you can see Daniel Summerhays there, confirmed as the clubhouse leader. He's taken that moniker off Brandon Grace. 
in a cage for quite some time, and now you're faced with five feet for a par, a bogey, to drop you at least four shots back, and maybe even five if you miss it. And he hasn't really hit a bad shot. He hit the fairway, hit what he thought was a good shot. It had to have looked great in the air. He knew it was flirting with the back edge. Climber to get to eight under. It bubbled. Oh. It bubble offline. It wasn't far off. Another good roll. He seems to have plenty of confidence in the stroke right now. To your point, Ned, they're getting bumpy, these greens. A lot of traffic today. These groups have all been locked in a 36-hole <laughs> slug fest, if you will. And I didn't really answer your question, Luke. It's soul crushing because you're there in the height of anxiety, the height of excitement. Your body is so locked in. Mentally, you are so focused. And literally, eight minutes later, you're out of contention. All the adrenaline rushes out of your body, hurting your gutter into. And if they're not, you don't make them. 16, the par three. 215 yards today, whole location cut just above the spine that you see in the back right of this green, 23 to carry it. The whole location just a few past it. Tough one to get close, easy to make par, big receptive green, very difficult to make birdie. There's been seven birdies today, playing a little over its par of three. There's been no doubles or worse. There you can see the fourth hardest hole on the property. This hole is said to be the original island green. There used to be a moat that surrounded this hole. Of course, it also didn't play 200 and 30 plus yards. Today, though, just 215. Timers managed it well, Luke. A couple of cards and a birdie. Another one to be handy here. Perfect location for him. So in the center of the green and just try to drift it towards the hole. Has he done it too much? As a player, Luke, when one player who's in contention is kind of pulling and drafting the entire group, when he makes a double bogey or his adrenaline rushes out of his body, it takes the entire group out. So we'll be interested to see what happens over the next couple of holes, how these guys... Team, he's got a two-shot bar for over Jason Day. Most likely the only two people that can still win it here after Stenson's double at 15. Here at 16, Kaima is his... Is this look from the bunker to the right? This is makeable. Just plop it out and let it trundle towards the hole. Open face, open stance. Swing down your body line. Well executed. It's got one of the hot rounds going of this final round. Three under three, 15. And that was after a bogey at five, so he's playing nicely, the German. Seven under is currently a share of ninth place. He's currently four back of our leader, Jimmy Walker. Shows a lot of heart for that young man. I mean, you look at though, he's able to shoot low scores. Goes 63 and then bounces back with a poor round. Could have thought, well, that was nice. Got my name in the leader books or the, or the uh, record, record books. books. Thank you. Here's Keimer now. It's an uncharacteristic miss, considering the way he's been putting of late. 
back on that Robert Strip point for a second as we watch Keimer clean up for bogey, Luke. I think the pairing's probably good for him in a sense. He can draft off Jason Day. He can draft off uh, some of the guys who are ahead of him, and he doesn't necessarily have to hold the pressure. Right? He's basically trying to come from behind. He's got a lot to play for, but he's not the guy. And someone like Robert Streb, he came from behind when he won in Sea Island. So I think that's a great scenario for him, repairing, having to sleep on that position. Too distant to make up the difference. Let's go to the longest hole on the property. It's a whopper. 618 yards, a crushing par five. Narrowest of shoots off of the tee. The cross bunkers that you see here in the distance, unreachable, 378 yards. Hit it in the fairway off the tee. Lay up with a long iron, even a hybrid or a fairway wood if you're a shorter hitter. To an elevated green, some four or five yards above the players. And the whole location today on 17 front left. 300, he's got to hit another one, 300. And even with lift clean in place, that ain't happening. All players just look to find their self in position for their third. The way they view it, they must break it down as a nine iron wedge par three. It's where they are for playing their third, but they're both in the fairway. That's step one complete here on 17. Jimmy Walker in control of this PGA Championship. He has been all week. Can he get it done? Timer hit it to 61 off the tee. Quiet, please, thank you. He'll be looking to hit this about 250 yards right on the edge of the tree that just bends out alongside the bunkers in the distance. A little bit of a tricky shot for Keimer who likes to play a fade because the fairway slopes so hard from left to right. But these conditions, Luke, not a problem. And he is in a perfect position for another birdie. And how well is Martin Keimer playing? Well, the rounds of the day, Jimmy Walker, Robert Streb are the only other players two under out on the course. There haven't been too many better than those scores in this final round. The pick of them was Eust Loughton, 565, and he did that very early this at the end of September. Minnesota, Hazeltine, Wei Yang, the only person who ever successfully chased down Tiger Woods in a major championship. Rich Beam, our own Rich Beam, won his PGA title there as well. What about Beam's performance this week? How good of a moment does he have holding out? Can't wait to chat to him on the Clubhouse Report. CBS Sports Network from 8 p.m. Eastern. Join Andrew Catalon, Rich Beam, Lee Jansen and myself for a complete comprehensive wrap-up of this 98th PGA Championship. Martin Keimer stands in for his third and 17. 104 yards, playing about 108 to the hole. He did 115. Just let it come back to you on the yo-yo string. Well judged for distance. Well, high some 20 feet away. And Luke, if you're Henrik Stenson, you're looking at where you stand, eight under par. Jimmy Walker's 13. BMW champion. What a run today. that was for Billy, too, wasn't it? He finished second in Boston, first in Chicago, first in Atlanta. And then became a father for the first time. Kyber here. This for Birdie to bounce back from the bogey at 16.
And Luke, when Billy Horschel won that FedEx Cup championship and that tour championship, there was a charity event for a country music singer named Colt Ford, just about 30 minutes from Eastlake. I was part of that event. We were wondering if Billy was going to show up. We were having a cleansing ale at the bar that evening, talking about the day's events and who walks in wearing the exact same clothes that he accepted the trophies and won all of them wave a flag. Quiet, thanks. Well, Kyma, I had a sloppy bogey here this morning, looking to make amends also with the three metal. Shy of the plaque. Two very solid tee balls from our featured pairing as they march down towards their balls for the last time this week. We'll take a quick commercial break. They were playing 36 whole matches a day. They even had a pro am on the Tuesday prior to the five days of matches. It was 12 rounds of golf in six days for Jim Barnes to beat Jock Hutchinson with a five footer on the last to win $500 for his work. A little different these days, professional golf. This is a $10 million purse, 1.8 to the winner. Martin Keimer. You know, you, you love that too, Luke, the first championship coming down to that. And of course, the history of this championship, even when it was match play in modern day. Remember last year's finish and, of course, Valhalla. A lot of drama in this PGA championship. It was born into it. Good look at what's in front of Martin Keimer. Just inside 250 yards. Right at the flagpole. And do your thing, Keimer. Two excellent shots, hole high. That for an eagle, which would be a closing 66. Eight under par. We'll have him in a tie for seventh. And Luke, if you're Henrik, you're, you're sitting here saying, I know I'm not going to win, but big galleries, this is... It flew, I would guess, 270. 242 uphill, call it 250, 55. And it flew all the way to the grandstand. As they march up to the green and get the appropriate applause, I'd like to give some to Brooks Kepka who with a strapped right ankle wouldn't have played in this championship this week if it wasn't for the fact that it was a major. He's in the clubhouse at nine under par, currently tied fourth after a 70 today in the final round. He's gone 66-70 in the final round, on the final day, I should say, the 36 hole. Just imagine how sore that ankle is after having played that much golf on it. He's had a lot of ligament damage. May have just played his way into the Ryder Cup team with that performance. Currently tied fourth alongside Matsuyama and Robert Streb, who's got 17 and 18 to play. If Stenson can get up and down, he'll get to nine under. And then... Paul Casey made a move. He wants on that Ryder Cup team desperately. country is a sports town but the fans here in New Jersey they think spectating is a sport they love it what about the reception they gave Henrik walking up there just going through the ruling here if he doesn't have a backswing he'll get free relief and get to drop while he certainly doesn't have a swing at all he'll just go to the nearest point no close to the hole
It's always a tricky ruling because you have to use an arc. Sometimes he'll just have drop areas for the temporary move of obstructions. Stinson has a choice. He'll go further right because the further right he goes. Good 10 yards. Quite a bit, guys. He's got to get a swing. Good well, in some capacity, he won't have a choice. Nearest point, no closer to the hole where he can generate a swing for the shot that he wants to play. go check the other direction to see which way is yeah that's what he's doing here he'll go find another swing where he's going to play and the shot may change this may need to be a bigger swing it's a little farther below the green There you go, so it looks like the drop to the right is the pick of the two options and he'll play from above the level of the green, which you'd imagine is an advantage. Yeah, absolutely, a good a good break here for Henrik Stenson. The other option is, if you tell me where, where the, where I'm, yeah, where the arc is, because if I go out here, I can, I can be closer to my ball if I can go further out, as long as, as, long as I'm not. I tell you what, I think your T is right on the line, yeah. equal distance. Yeah. What a terrific understanding of the rules by Henrik Stenson. A very tricky ruling. You heard him mention, Luke, the arc. And that's exactly what they were trying to figure out. Yeah, that, that's, looks like it's right down. Again, he can't be any closer to the hole. Has to take full relief. And it's the point nearest to his original position. couple of practice swings to make. Yeah. I think you'll have to redrop that would be my guess. So he'll do it again. That drop does not count because it wasn't full relief. And that one has bounced closer to the hole. So now he just places it. Assuming he's got a free back swing. Yeah. I reckon he'll make it work, to be honest. Yeah. So now he's got a perfect lie on the same level as the green, a little bit above the hole. There you go. There's a good look at it. And when I say above the hole, I'm not talking in relationship to the actual putting surface. I'm talking about in relationship towards the clubhouse and the way this green breaks. He's got a lot more green to work with now had he had to drop on the left side. So it becomes a significantly easier, more approachable shot. Stay still, quiet, please. Very similar shot that he had on the back side of 15, except the better lie. Still has to accelerate through it. Landed about six or eight feet on the green. Just got there, but it'll funnel all the way down. And we'll get ever so close anyway. And a bad shot by Stenson that left for a birdie. And he came into this final round on the back of three straight 67s. And here we 
was very patient out of the gates. Five straight pars before he made the birdie at six. It was the double bogey at 15 which ended his campaign. What a wonderful three weeks it's been in Stensi's life. When he looks back on this round, he'll look to 14 in the putt that could have been, 15 the shot that should have been. And from there, he'll say, I might have been able to had I have pulled that shot off on 15. Well, Kaima, if he holds this 33 footer, he'll match Stenson at eight under. Get a share of eight with Stenson if Stenson's bogey at uh, birdie doesn't drop. What about that? The Sunday 66. Yeah, that is so good. And you know he, you know he was thinking. I want to put the gears on Henrik right here. A special moment for a special player. That'll be his first top ten in a major since he won at Pinehurst.